Welcome to the State of Chinese Americans National Survey webinar. I am Anne and I, Chief of Staff at the Committee of 100. We will begin today's webinar with some opening remarks from the leadership at Committee of 100 and Columbia University, followed by presentations from the Columbia and Committee of 100 research teams. We will then hold a live question and answer session during which attendees are encouraged to type and submit a question via the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Please note that we are recording today's webinar and the recording along with a copy of the presentation slides will be made available and attendees will receive an email notifying them of so when they are available. And now to provide some opening remarks, please join me in welcoming the president of Committee of 100, Zheng Yu Wang. Good afternoon and welcome to this informational webinar for the State of Chinese Americans Survey. Thank you for joining us today. I am Zheng Yu Wang, President of Committee of 100, and I am excited to share with you our collaboration with Columbia University on this timely and critical research. In today's webinar, you will hear from some of the leaders of our two organizations on the importance of this project and from our research team on the design of the survey and how you can get involved. For over 30 years, Committee of 100 has been dedicated to the pursuit of two missions, to advance constructive dialogue and the relations between the peoples of the United States and Greater China, and to foster the full inclusion of Chinese Americans across all aspects of American society. In pursuit of that second mission, Committee of 100 is committed to generating real impactful research and data to reveal and represent the status and needs of Chinese Americans so that we can better educate the public on who we are, steadily breaking down entrenched stereotypes and detailing a fuller, more nuanced story of what it means to be Chinese American. Through this endeavor, we aim to showcase the many layers of our diverse community to better understand the myriad challenges that we face today and to be better equipped to recommend clear and practical ways towards building a more supportive, secure, and flourishing future. Your help is critical in making this project successful. The more voices we can capture through the survey, the more robust and impactful the resulting research will be. Committee of 100 and Columbia University are the conduits through which your experiences, concerns, and needs will be amplified. We hope you will engage with us and provide your input as we together create positive and enduring changes for the better. Now I'd like to introduce the Chair of Committee of 100. He is a veteran of public service, having served as the former Governor of Washington State, Secretary of Commerce, and U.S. Ambassador to China. He is currently the Interim President of Bellevue College. Please welcome Gary Locke. Welcome everyone. I'm Gary Locke, former governor of the state of Washington and now chair of the Committee of 100. And it's a real honor and pleasure to share with you this critical and timely research endeavor, a collaboration between the Committee of 100 and Columbia University. Throughout my time in public service and now as a president of a college, my priorities have always focused on education because to me, education is the great equalizer in our society. But education doesn't stop once we've graduated from the classroom. To tackle the challenges facing our society and to move toward a more unified and prosperous society, the constant pursuit and sharing of knowledge is critical to discovery and advancing that knowledge into real impactful change. Data is important. From my time in government, I've seen firsthand the power of clear, robust, and representative data to push for change in policy, to advocate for funding, and to tell a fuller, more impactful story. Today, over 5 million Chinese Americans call this nation home. Yet in so many ways, we're still fighting to be fully accepted, represented, and supported here in this, our country. The recent pandemic painfully brought to the surface many deep-seated struggles that the Chinese American community continues to face, including economic insecurity, and fractured and inadequate social services, all underlined by racial hostility, fueled by dangerous xenophobia, stereotypes, misinformation, and outright lies. 
The research survey that we're sharing in this webinar is an important step to gaining a better understanding of the myriad ways that define the current Chinese American experience and then use that understanding to help dismantle stereotypes that prevent genuine inclusion and connection. This survey, which invites input from individuals across a broad range of topics, will serve to amplify the voices of our incredibly diverse community and provide a more complete understanding of what it means to be Chinese American today. Committee of 100 is proud to collaborate with Columbia University on this critically needed research. Thank you very much. And now please welcome Dr. Chen Gao, who is a professor of social policy and social work and the director of the China Center for Social Policy at Columbia University and the lead researcher from the Columbia team on this project. Dr. Gao. Thank you, Anna. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time to join us today for this very exciting launch webinar. My name is Qing Gao. I'm a professor at the School of Social Work and the director of the China Center for Social Policy at Columbia University. It's my great honor to lead this important research project, the State of Chinese Americans Survey. Chinese Americans are a vital part of the American society. In recent decades, the size of the Chinese American population has been growing rapidly and our voices are ever more important. As a Chinese American scholar, I have been so motivated to conduct this research to show the world the rich and diverse backgrounds, experiences, contributions and needs of our community. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed troubling racial discrimination and economic consequences faced by many Chinese Americans. These challenges are shared by other Asian Americans and marginalized populations. We need scientific evidence to help us understand what's happening and how to meet these challenges. I'm very proud to undertake this research as a member of Columbia University, one of the world's leading research institutions. At Columbia, we are committed to pursuing new knowledge, generating scientific evidence, and educating informed and engaged citizens. The Columbia School of Social Work, where I'm a faculty member, was the first social work school founded in the United States. This year, we are celebrating our 125th anniversary. Our faculty, students, and alumni pursue research and action projects to advance policy and practice, enhance human well being, and make the world a better and more just place. I also have the great honor of leading the China Center for Social Policy at Columbia. The center is a hub for innovation and action on social welfare for Chinese societies and Chinese people around the world. Previously, we conducted a research project called the study of Asian American families that focused on the child rearing experiences of Asian American families. And we advocated for social services to meet the needs of this population. Building on our earlier efforts, now we are so proud to launch and carry out the State of Chinese American Survey, which is our current um, signature project. This landmark national survey will provide much needed data on the demographic, economic, health, social, and political situations of the Chinese American population. We are confident that our findings will help inform policymakers and the public on the status and needs of the Chinese American community and help us develop better policy solutions. We are so grateful for the many community organizations across the country who are helping us to reach Chinese Americans of many identities and diverse experiences. Thank you so much for your invaluable contributions and support. I'm also deeply grateful for the members of our advisory group who offer us guidance, support, 
and advice along the way. I'm also deeply grateful to my team members, PhD and master students at Columbia University. Your brilliance and hard work made this possible. I'm so grateful to you. Now, it is my great honor and pleasure to introduce to you our next speaker, the president of Columbia University, Lee Bollinger. President Bollinger became the university's president 20 years ago and is the longest serving Ivy League president. Under his leadership, Columbia has been redefining what it means to be a great research university in the 21st century. Personally, I'm highly motivated by and deeply grateful for President Bollinger's support to our survey project. Please join me to welcome President Bollinger. Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to join you and express my support for this survey of the nation's diverse Chinese American communities. This collaboration between Columbia's School of Social Work and the Committee of 100 is a timely and first of its kind research effort. We're eagerly looking forward to the actionable data it will yield. This university is committed to discovering new knowledge and translating that knowledge into work that benefits humanity. I personally call this the fourth purpose of a university in addition to teaching, scholarship, and public service. It's a mission that aligns perfectly with the objectives of this project, to invite Chinese Americans to share their experiences, gather demographics, economic and health data from them, and communicate that information in ways that will combat stereotypes and advance policies and programs that serve their needs. We're all painfully aware of the racially charged violence and harassment that Chinese Americans and the broader AAPI community have had to contend with, especially in the wake of the pandemic. This study is part of a broader effort to address this crisis and capture the depth and breadth of the Chinese American experience in this country. It is only at the beginning stages and we're looking forward to seeing how it unfolds in the coming months. On behalf of the entire university, I offer my thanks to all of you for being part of this important effort. And now please welcome the co-chairman of the New York Philharmonic, trustee of the Metropolitan Museum and co-founder of Committee of 100, Oscar Tang. In the aftermath of the Tiananmen Square protests and massacre in June 1989, Chinese Americans were looked to for their reactions and their viewpoints on developments in China. Yet there was no organization which, which could speak on behalf of the more than 1 million Chinese Americans residing in this country at the time. At the urging of Dr. Henry Kissinger, the late I am Bay led in the founding of Committee 100 to gather together Chinese American leaders across a wide spectrum to amplify the voices of the Chinese American community. Over three decades later, Committee 100's mission of contributing to a constructive U.S.-China relationship and promoting the full participation of Chinese Americans in society is more urgent than ever in light of rising U.S.-China tensions and increased anti-Asian racism aggravated by the COVID pandemic. With our rapidly growing community, more than ever caught in the middle, it is important to tell the story of the Chinese American experience, communicating to the world the diversity in our community and a fuller picture of our status, needs, and opinions. And to use this information 
to advocate for more supportive policies and environments to further the equal participation of Chinese Americans and other under, underrepresented groups in the life of America. Committee 100 is committed to the concept that the more we know and the better we communicate that knowledge, the better we can work with partners to face the challenges ahead. And now for our first presenter who will take us through the survey instrument from the Columbia University team, please welcome doctoral student and project manager, Jennifer Zhou. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be in this space with you all, and thank you again for joining us um, this afternoon. Um, my name is Jen So, and I'm a PhD student at the Columbia School of Social Work. I work very closely with Dr. Chen Gao in overseeing the day-to-day -day management of the survey project uh, for the Columbia team. Our team has spent many months designing, translating, and building the online survey, and we're very, very excited to learn of your experiences and thoughts through the survey, and we look forward to sharing the findings with you all in the coming months. So at this time, I will introduce the survey and demonstrate how you can navigate it online. In total, the survey has 77 questions in six major sections, as you can see on the screen. These sections were selected so that together they can provide much needed data on the demographic, economic, health, and so sociopolitical situations of the Chinese American population. We want to make it clear that our research team understands that some of these questions and also topics included in the survey may feel a bit sensitive or personal. We respect all the participants' privacy and will keep responses confidential. All responses will be reported in the aggregate form and included anonymously in the final report. Anyone completing the survey at any point may refuse to answer any questions that they don't wish to answer. Now, I want to spend some time reviewing each section more in detail to better understand what purpose it serves and what kind of questions are asked in each section. So the survey begins with the demographic section to learn about the participants. The section includes basic questions about the participants' birth year, ancestry, and ethnic origin, relationship status, household size, and geographic location. In the second section, uh, called racial and cultural background, we ask about the participants' cultural background and language preferences. The section includes topics such as family history, immigration status, and language use. The second section is followed up by the third section on health, which addresses the participants' health status as well as their service access and needs. Some of the topics included in the section are physical and mental health, disability, insurance coverage, and health care service access. The fourth section is on economic activities and security. Uh, the section inquires about work-related information of the participants and their economic well-being. Some of the topics included in the section are employment status, employment type, individual and household earnings, housing status, as well as financial needs. Now, the fifth section is on social engagement, which explores the participants' interpersonal relationships, as well as their personal and wider communities. Some of the topics included in this section are participants' social circles, their sense of acceptance and belonging, and their discrimination experiences. The final section of the survey is on political engagement. The section addresses the participants' interest in domestic and international current events, as well as their political beliefs. The topics in this section include current event interest, political leanings and behaviors, as well as participants' thoughts and experiences related to US-China relations. At the end of the survey, there is one optional section where the, participant, the participants can provide their contact information. They have the option to only provide their email address, their phone number, or they can choose to provide both to the Columbia research team. The reason we ask for contact information are for two reasons. One is to share the final report when it is ready, or two, to send invitations to participate in future surveys. All contact information will remain confidential and will only be accessible to the Columbia research team. 
And again, this section is completely optional for all, all participants. So you can choose to skip this section if you'd like to. And at this time, I will show what the online survey looks like on different electronic devices. So the first option is to take the survey either on a desktop or a laptop. And this is how the survey would appear when you first access it. You can see the Columbia University and C100 logos at the top. And right below on the right side, uh, you see the chosen language for the survey. Uh, currently, the survey language is set to English by default, but you can change it to simplified or traditional Chinese. Uh, in a minute, I will demonstrate how you can change the language so you can take the survey in your language of choice. The next device I want to show you is a tablet. And this is how the survey will appear on a tablet, which doesn't look very different uh, from the desktop or a laptop. And the last option I want to show you is on a smartphone. So this specific question, uh, which is a screener, uh, is short enough to fit on the screen for a smartphone, but some questions in the survey might require participants to scroll down. And in that case, one simply has to scroll down as they would normally do so in other instances, in other browsers or other apps. So at this time, I will take a few minutes demonstrating how to navigate the online survey. So here is a preview of the survey. Um, I am using a preview mode. So when you are accessing as a participant or any of your community members access a survey, they won't see the, the top portion with all these different menu items. Uh, so as shown earlier on the screenshots, we see here uh, Columbia and C100 logos. And right here, right here, um, is the button that you can, the drop down menu that you can use to choose a language of your choice for the survey. So the default is set to English, but if you click the drop down menu, you can either choose to take the survey and simplify Chinese or traditional Chinese. So I'm just going to go through a few questions to walk through um, different ways to respond to the survey, um, trying to demonstrate how you can navigate it. So here we open up the survey with a screener question. Um, we want to make sure that folks who are taking the survey are eligible to take it. So once you read the question and know that you do meet these three criteria, then you can click yes. And here on the bottom right hand corner, you see the next button. And here is where you can provide consent. So right after uh, giving the uh, passing the screener question, you give the consent. You can scroll down and once you read through the consent form, if you agree, you can click to agree to participate in the survey. And here we start with the first section out of the six sessions that I have outlined. So some questions will ask you to type in your answer. Uh, so here, the first question we ask is what year were you born? And we give an example um, of what you can type in. So I'm just going to give say 1980. And once I type in the response, then I will move to the next page. Here, um, the question asks, what do you consider your own ancestry or ethnic origin to be? And you can choose to provide one response, or if you think that there are multiple um, responses that feel most appropriate for you, then you can choose to give uh, more than one. So simply, again, you just have to type in your responses. So let's say I want to provide two options or responses, then you can simply type in and move on to the next question. So here we've got a question about the highest level of education that you have completed. Uh, so there's multiple options that you can choose from. Uh, we encourage that you do read through all the options um, and simply you just have to choose one option that applies to you. So I'm going to choose an option here. And then the next question asks, what is your current relationship status? And again, you're welcome to choose one that is most appropriate for you. Or if there's an option that's not listed, you can choose other and specify what feel most appropriate for you. So I'm just going to put in a test response, then move on to the next page. And here we have a question about what gender you currently identify with. And some questions in the survey will ask you uh, to choose all that apply. So you have the option to choose one response or multiple uh, responses if that's what you feel most comfortable or 
appropriate for you, then let's say I want to choose transgender and woman. And then we can move on to the next question. Or again, if there are instances when you feel like your option is not available, um, then you can always choose to uh, specify whenever appropriate and available. And if there's any question that um, you would prefer not to respond to, um, if there's an option available, you're also welcome to do that as well. Um, and I'm not going to answer, respond to this question as a way to show that you can also skip questions in case you don't feel comfortable answering some questions. And I'm going to skip a few pages to also show um, how you can respond to a matrix of questions. So I believe it is bookmark. Here we go. So this question asks about how often you felt in a certain way in the past 30 days. And this question is uh, located under the health section. Now, as you can see here, um, there are multiple options available, a scale available for each um, item for each row. So, at, so we want to um, make sure that you, um, to the extent that you feel comfortable that you're responding to choosing an option for every row. So you can choose none of the time or a little of the time. Um, after reading the questions that are being asked for each row. So uh, you can go on. And that's how you would respond to a matrix question. And um, also there will be instances when you are going to be asked to respond to um, a long open-ended form asking about potentially your discrimination experiences um, or your thoughts or experiences on US-China relations. Um, those are longer answers if that's what you would like to provide where you can type in more than just a few words. Um, and make sure you are getting to the end of the survey, which instead of this next button will indicate a submit button. The, sub the word submit will be indicated in capitalized large word, you can't miss it. So make sure you submit to fully complete the survey. So at this time, um, I would like to invite Anne and I, Chief of Staff at C100, to uh, give some information about how you and your community can get involved um, in terms of filling out the survey and also encouraging others to participate. Thank you, Jen. I'm gonna pull up my, um, my screen. Hopefully people can see the slide. Um, as Jen said, I am not going to speak to some ways that your network can get involved and engage with the survey. So firstly, if you are an adult of Chinese ethnicity currently living in the US, we encourage you to take the survey today. Um, the simplest way to do so is to go to the Committee of 100 website. You can click the large banner on the homepage and it will take you directly to the survey. If you'd like to read more about the survey prior to taking it, at the top of the Committee of 100 homepage, you can click on initiatives and then select the State of Chinese Americans survey. And that will take you to a web page dedicated to the survey, including a frequently asked questions section that will hopefully provide you with the background information to better understand this research project. If you have any additional questions, there is also an email address that we welcome you to reach out to for more information. On the same webpage, you'll also find links to informational flyers that can be easily emailed or printed with information about the survey and both a link for electronic sharing and a QR code for easy scanning that will also take you to the survey. These flyers are available in English, traditional Chinese, and simplified Chinese. This research will be made successful only through the involvement of the Chinese American community. And so we encourage you to get involved in three distinct ways. First and foremost, as we said, please take the survey today if you are eligible. Then please share the survey as widely as possible with all those who can and should include their voices in this research. And finally, we are working with organizations throughout the country to educate and engage their networks on the survey. We're so grateful for these partnerships as these groups are knowledgeable and trusted leaders in their communities, and they are able to get the survey to those hard to reach individuals who oftentimes get excluded from this type of research. Those who may not speak English fluently or at all, uh, and those who may be of lower economic means. These organizations have been and will be vital in helping to make sure those voices are included in this research as well. 
earlier, Jennifer um, mentioned the pilot study that was completed this summer. That study was made successful through the support of an efforts of four partners in particular, the Chinese American Women in Action, the Chinese American Planning Council, the Community Youth Center of San Francisco, and the, the United States Heartland China Association. We're so thankful for their continued engagement and are really pleased to have added more partners as we continue to build this nationwide network of leading organizations who are well-versed in the community's makeup and needs to ensure that we hear from a diverse group of people. We also invite you to get in touch with us if you are part of or know of a group who share a similar passion and purpose. We'd love to speak with you on how you can get involved and help make this as impactful and helpful an effort as possible for the Chinese American community. As Dr. Gao mentioned, we also wanna thank our advisory group for dedicating their time and expertise on the guidance of this research. Their collective academic and civic engagement expertise has and will continue to be an invaluable research for us as we move forward. We also wanna express our gratitude to Kenson Ventures LLC and City Private Bank for their generosity in making this project possible. And with that, we will now turn to our question and answer portion. Um, please do click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom window to type and submit a question to us. So I'm going to invite the speakers to um, turn their videos on and join us as we go through the Q&A portion of the webinar. Thank you, everyone. So we have had a few questions um, come in through the Q&A box. And again, we encourage you to please keep sending in more of your questions. So the first question that came in was, will we have any online help while executing the survey? Um, Jen, would you like to, to take that question? Sure, I can. Um, so while you're taking the survey, there unfortunately is no um, explicit help in terms of uh, walking through the questions with you. However, you can always reach out to us at swchinesesurvey at columbia.edu if there is any technical um, issues or troubleshooting um, that you need any support on. Thank you, Jen. I will also add that I believe you can also pause the survey halfway through and your responses are saved. So if you have any trouble at all, you can always pause, get the answers you need, and then come back to resume the survey taking. Great. Um, the next question is, do you qualify to take the survey if you are half Chinese American? Um, Dr. Gao, would you like to answer that question? Yes, uh, excellent question. Um, so our inclusion criterion is if you self-identify as Chinese American. So this is entirely up to you, uh, whether you feel you self-identify as a Chinese American and you're 18 years old or older and you currently live in the US. So uh, to be very explicit, Chinese American doesn't uh, imply anything about citizenship or green card status. It's yourself identify as a person of Chinese origin who currently lives in the US um, and that will uh, qualify you to take the survey. Thank you. Our next question is, um, if a participant does not submit the survey um, until the end, will, will the survey record their partially um, filled out survey? Jen, would you like to answer that? Sure, I can take that question. So it is important that anyone who would like their responses to be counted toward the survey, please click that submit button at the end. Um, again, like we have mentioned, um, if there are any questions that you would not like to answer, you would prefer not to, then you it's okay to skip. Uh, but it is very important that every participant clicks the submit button at the end in order for um, even partial responses to be counted. Great, thank you, Jen. When the survey is completed, um, how will the results be shared with participants who took the survey? Um, Dr. Gao, would you like to, to answer that? Of course, um, and I invite uh, Jen and Sam to uh, supplement my answers, please. Um, so we, uh, 
anticipate having the report out early next year. We will share the report widely through both the Columbia and Committee of 100 uh, platforms and venues. And we will also share them with our collaboration organizations uh, from all over the country. Uh, and for those of you who signed up to receive our report, we will send it directly to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and to Dr. Gao's point and to Jen's earlier presentation, there is an option for people at the end of the survey to provide their contact information to proactively say, yes, I want to get the results of the survey. But if not, early next year, um, the, the data will be widely available um, to the public via the channels that Dr. Gao mentioned. Just to add to this, Anna, uh, we also work with the different media outlets, including both English language and Chinese language media outlets. And already, I think we received some help in spreading the word by uh, different media uh, partners. And we will continue to do that when we have the report and share our findings. We will also have similar webinars to uh, report to you what uh, mm -hmm. we find and share with you. So thank you. I think on that note, um, a related question that came in is, what is it that we expect to see or what do we hope to glean from the results of the survey? Dr. Gao, if you don't mind again. Of course, uh, thank you so much for that question. We have been thinking about this quite a lot while we design and craft the questions in the past several months. I think the major theme we want to show through these findings is just how incredibly diverse our community is, right? There's this myth, uh, Asian Americans or Chinese Americans are doing, are doing great um, which there's some truth to it, but it's not the entire truth. Our group has a lot of diversity within this community in terms of uh, our origins, language spoken, socioeconomic backgrounds, family situations, and social and political engagement. So we want to show, their, uh, show the rich and diverse experiences and voices we have within this community. And we also want to, um, better uh, communicate that so that others don't perceive us in a certain way, right? The stereotypes. So I think that's uh, the most important message we want to be able to reveal based on the data. Uh, also, we want to um, show what the pandemic has uh, done for our community uh, in terms of both uh, racial uh, discrimination and hate instance, which we try to capture in this survey, but also uh, very importantly, the economic consequences faced by our community. So many people have contributed, worked hard to address the challenges brought about by the pandemic, but how has it impacted our community, people's livelihoods? Um, so we want to be able to capture that because this is still 2022. Uh, so we will have a very timely uh, report for that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gao. Um, a question came in about whether a person or a family should take the survey. Um, in other words, can, is a survey based on an individual or can a family unit be submitting one survey set of responses? Um, Jen, would you like to answer that question? Um, I will actually pass this over to Sam, um, if that's okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Jen. Uh, so only individuals can fill out a survey. Uh, if you'd like your family members to take the survey, please uh, share the link with them and they can take it as individuals as well. Thank you, Sam. Going through some more of the questions that have come in. Um, how long will the survey be available for? I can answer that. Uh, so we will have the survey open uh, throughout December. Initially, we were going to uh, aim to close it in early December, but I think uh, having it open throughout December will give our community, especially those who are harder to reach, uh, a greater chance to participate in the survey. We also want to encourage all of you to help us to reach 
the different representations within our community. Um, certainly, um, some subgroups within our group, uh, our community would be harder to reach for us. So we hope to get to uh, um, representation of the whole country in terms of geographic location, age groups, gender groups, um, different socioeconomic and educational backgrounds and people who speak different languages. So we hope you can help us to reach uh, a diverse representation of the population. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gao. Um, our next question is um, about the issue of anti-Asian uh, pre prejudice and violence. And I think the question would be asking, do any questions in the survey um, speak to that or do we hope to have the results um, perhaps speak to, to that issue? Um, Dr. Gao or Jen or Sam, I, maybe we start with Dr. Gao. Yeah, I can answer this and please feel free to uh, join in, in answering this. So uh, part of my motivation for undertaking this research is from my earlier work in New York. So in 2020, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, my research team at Columbia, which has been conducting a longitudinal survey of well-being in New York City, added a module to capture the rise in anti-Asian discrimination and hate during the pandemic. We have so far issued two reports that captured this spike and how it has been impacting the daily lives of New Yorkers. We later also compared the data between New York and California and found similar patterns. So that motivated me to say, what is happening elsewhere in the country, right? What's happening nationwide for this population? So in this current survey, we have a module, we have multiple questions about how uh, people have experienced uh, the anti-Asian discrimination and hate, what kind of incidents they have personally or their family members have gone through and how they are coping with this, whether they are seeking help or support actively or whether they are dealing with it in some other ways. We also have um, an open-ended question. We invite people who are willing uh, to do so, to share with us their experiences, their stories, and that will help us gain an in-depth understanding of what has uh, been our population, our community has been going through. And this uh, mirrors what we have been doing in New York. So it will be a fascinating uh, ongoing and ideally comparative research uh, with our earlier findings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gao. Um, the next question I think sort of goes back to uh, perhaps what we hope to glean from the results. Uh, we mentioned during the presentation that the results will be um, reported in aggregate. So is the intention that we want to tell, is, is it the intention that the results be sort of gener generalizable to all Chinese Americans? Um, how do we want to actually present the data that we're finding through, through the survey? Um, Dr. Gallagher, if you don't mind. <laughs> no problem, I can answer this. So as uh, we indicate in the title of our study, it's called the State of Chinese Americans. We want to show a full picture, a comprehensive picture of Chinese Americans, this population, who we are, and uh, in terms of the six domains we cover. Uh, what our experiences are. So we want the findings to be nationally representative. And to achieve that, uh, I think as somebody pointed out, we're using this community outreach and a snowballing method to reach the uh, participants. We will use a statistical weighting procedure so that our sample findings will be able to reflect the national population. Uh, again, to do that, uh, we need both the statistical expertise we also need uh, our community members' help to reach uh, many different subpopulations within our community because only with the representation, we could adjust using weights to reflect those different population groups. So we appreciate your support in this. Our main report will be the state of Chinese Americans that will be aggregate national level uh, presentation of the findings. We also hope to see if we are able to um, zero in into some subpopulations. For example, if we have enough representation of the senior population, or if we have enough uh, representation of the Midwest, right? So we are trying to achieve 
a greater representation at both the national level and the subgroup level so that we can say more about both. Um, so we thank you for your support and we hope many of you will join us to reach this goal. Thank you. We mentioned that the survey is about 77 questions long. A uh, question came in, how long does it usually take to, to complete the survey? Jen, would you mind answering that question? Sure. Um, so it's mentioned um, in the consent form, which is page two of our online survey, um, as we're sharing different information about what the survey involves. It also mentioned that survey takes about 10 to 20 minutes. And we have um, seen the average time based on our pilot survey, as well as um, some of the responses re we've received so far, really fall in like right in between um, 10 to 20 minutes. So I would say about 15 to 16. But we also want to be mindful that um, depending on which device you use or time of the day or familiarity with um, technological access and navigation, um, there could be differences um, based on all those characteristics and factors. Great, thank you, Jen. We've had um, several questions that have come in about um, how people can get engaged and, and how they can take the survey, which is great to see. Um, someone asked if, if there are flyers in Chinese supermarkets. We, we have flyers, as we mentioned, available, so we're happy to connect with you um, on how we can make sure that it's, it's, it's out there in the community. Um, there are QR codes on the flyers that make for easy scanning, so you can access the survey from your mobile phone, on the go, wh wherever you are. Um, someone also asked about whether this survey is being promoted via social media so that they can easily reshare and, and share the information across their channels. Answer is yes, I, both for, for Community 100 and I believe for Columbia. You know, we have our Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn profiles, Instagram, where we are widely um, um, sharing the survey information. So please, you know, we'll, we'll provide the information in a follow-up email to attendees, but please visit those channels and, and um, you know, repost and share the information as you're able to. We, we, we love to see people's engagement on this, so thank you. And Anna, I just posted in the chat for the webinar a link to the survey, as well as the webpage that contains the flyers that include both links and QR codes that participants are welcome to share with anyone and everyone. Thank you, Sam. Yes. Um, someone also asked specifically if there's a marketing paragraph that we can that that one can use to, to promote the survey. Um, yes, you know, please do get in touch with myself or Sam uh, for those organizations, individuals who want to get involved with promoting the survey. We have um, a whole outreach packet that we prepared and would be happy to, to share with you and help you disseminate through whatever channels make the most sense for, for your network. So thank you again for, for people's uh, engagement on this. Um, another question that's come in is for researchers um, who may be interested in a survey um, and they partner and, and work with us to, to disseminate, um, how will they be able to sort of access the data? Um, is there a way that we can provide them um, data responses from the survey itself? Um, Jen, would you like to maybe take that to start? I think oh, I can Gow. answer the question. Uh, Jen, feel free to join me. Uh, thank you for this question. So we have been aware of this uh, from the very beginning by us designing the questions. We draw from the literature uh, that investigates all these topics. So we are building this survey um, on the accumulated expertise and a lot of prior research done that is to study the population broadly, but also Asian Americans and Chinese Americans. In terms of data sharing, uh, we are prepared to do so, although we need to be uh, sure uh, when we do so, we are ready. So we are working to uh, have the documentation really thorough and comprehensive. And as the data come in, we are doing data cleaning, data monitoring, uh, and data analysis that is preliminary to guide our further efforts. Anyone who is interested in um, accessing the data uh, or joining efforts, please reach out to us. Uh, with the, both uh, Anna and Sam, but with Columbia, you can reach us from the email we provided earlier. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gao. Um, another um, question. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry no, no. Uh, so I also uh, linked my email uh, in the chat for everybody. Uh, if 
you and your organization would like to help disseminate the survey and partner with us, please reach out to me. Um, but if you have any questions about the survey itself, or if we don't get to your question today, please reach out to the uh, Columbia EDU email address provided. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And we did include those contact email addresses in the presentation um, itself today, and we will be sharing a copy of this presentation. So rest assured, our contact information will be available, and we encourage you to please get in touch with us um, if you're interested. Um, great, thank you. Um, another question is, will there be any quali qualitative interviews um, conducted to supplement the survey data? Um, Dr. Gare? Yes, that's also a very good question. We debated whether to do this or not. At this stage, we don't have a separate quantitative component to go along with the survey. Uh, in the earlier work we did in New York, we actually had a quantitative data bank, uh, story bank data collection effort. For this current survey, we built in some open-ended questions that is room for people to provide quantitative data. So for example, people who are willing to share with us their experience in some racially charged uh, discrimination or incident they're invited to share. We also have several other open-ended questions where people can type their answers. Um, as of now, we don't plan to conduct interviews, although this is only the beginning. So this is our first effort to generate this state of Chinese Americans um, report. As we move forward, we have interest in conduct conducting quantitative interviews. We also have interest in understanding um, more uh, in a deeper sense, a lot of specific questions that are on people's minds. So for example, we wanted to ask families with children about their children's education, expectations, aspirations, et cetera. We just don't have room to put that into this uh, first survey, but we have a list of topics we're potentially interested in pursuing down the road. And again, for those of you who um, agreed to share your email or phone number, we will reach out to you if we launch those uh, further studies. Thanks. Thank you. Um, one question asks if the survey actually asks how participants learned about the survey. Um, Jen, would you like to answer that one? Sure. Yes, we have uh, this question at the end, um, not in the political engagement module, but in the optional contact information module. And this information um, is really helpful, especially throughout the survey um, data collection process to learn where our participants are learning about the survey. Um, mm -hmm through whom or how they may have come across um, news about our survey. Uh, so we do ask that um, at the end. And so far, uh, what we've seen has been incredibly helpful. Okay, hey, thank you. And I think um, relatedly, because there's been a few questions about how the survey is being disseminated. Um, as we, we mentioned, you know, we are really uh, leveraging the resources, the knowledge, um, and the trust of community organizations throughout the country to to share the survey with their constituents, with their membership, with their with their communities. Um, so, you know, we are actively partnering with um, associations, organizations, um, advocacy groups, um, student groups to both educate their network about the survey and also encourage those who are eligible to take it. So someone asked about um, religious groups in particular. Absolutely. You know, if you're part of a church, um, any sort of religious affiliation group that that you want to um, educate about the survey, you know, we love to connect with you as well to, to share more information with you. And again, encourage anyone, any Chinese adult currently living in the U.S., you know, we want you to, to participate regardless of citizenship. Um, so yes, we are, we are working hard to connect with all types of folks across the country on this. Um, let's give me one moment while I see if there are any questions that we may have missed. Um, I know that we're reaching close to the top of the hour, so maybe we can kind of end on on this question, which is, uh, or do we have any hypothesis of what we may see in the results? Um, Dr. Gao, I'm going to throw that question to you. <laughs> of course, yes. So I think a major hypothesis we have is, again, how diverse our population is. Uh, we don't assume everybody has a high income or high English proficiency or hold a certain political view, uh, we want to show that. And that's our major hypothesis. We also uh, want to show that uh, people 
care about um, both their roots, um, kind of their origins, both cultural and uh, physical background, but also where they are, which is the US. I think uh, we have been subject to this, um, uh, the sense of belonging, right? Whether we are fully a part of the US society, the American culture and society, we want to reflect that, that Chinese Americans are part of the American society um, very inherently, but also they have their reflections and the continuation of the cultural roots and traditions. So that's another hypothesis we want to be able to show through the data. Um, again, we have a lot of uh, different sections and questions. Um, for example, health is not an uh, area that we have a lot of evidence on. And the COVID-19 pandemic showed us how important health is, both physical health, uh, mental health, and public health. So we also ask about those and want to show how our community is showing up in terms of health outcomes. Uh, especially, um, I think I care very much about mental health and subjective well-being. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Garrow. Um, maybe we'll actually end on this question because I've seen it asked a couple of times. Uh, we just earlier, but just to reiterate, uh, when the the data, the survey uh, results and free research results will be available. Um, we are aiming to uh, release the results of the research in early 2023. So in Q1 of 2023 as a target timeline. And as Dr. Gunn and others mentioned, you know, we'll be hosting another event at the time to talk about in depth through the results of the research, as well as having the data and report be available on the Columbia website, the Committee 100 website. And we look forward to sharing more with you um, in just a few months time. So um, we look forward to that. Um, I know there were a couple more questions that we unfortunately I don't think we'll have time to address today, but I am actually going to share my screen again with um, the contact information um, that Sam helpfully provided, but I'll just kind of uh, put it up on the screen um, so folks can see. Um, and just a thank you to everyone for joining us today. Please feel free to reach out to us with any additional questions to the contacts um, listed on the screen on the slide here. Um, again, a recording of the webinar will be made available on the Committee of 100 website. And I wanna thank Dr. Gao, Jennifer, Sam, and all of our speakers today for their time. Um, as we end the webinar, there will be a three question survey that will pop up on your screen. So please take a minute, stay on, um, and give us your feedback via that survey. Uh, it's much appreciated. Um, thank you and take care.